all here for you to see. Neil, don't go away, because right up, right next, is Jeff Lemick's Local Rock Review. Jeff Lemlick here with the Local Rock Review, and it's my pleasure today to have with me a guy by the name of Jeffrey Allen. Now, Jeffrey was in two of the most legendary bands from South Florida in the mid-60s, the Montels and Evil, and was one of the guys who was a real groundbreaker down here, one of the real pioneers. They, they're the ones who had to get their butts slapped pretty much for a lot of the bands that followed for them to be able to break rules and, and do things that happened in the 60s. Wouldn't you say so? I guess. I guess. I want to show something here that really uh, drives that home. This is from February of 1965, and uh, Jeffrey, this is what he looked like in February of 1965, and these are three other members of the Montels who all went to Southwest High, and at this time, they were in danger of being thrown out of school because of the length of their hair, and now if you take a look, we'll take one more look at the picture. And you can see that this length of hair in February of 65 was really shocking down here. And it really could get you thrown out of school to have what was conceived of as being long hair like this. Exactly. So what ultimately happened? Did you have to cut your hair? Did you... I, know, I just told the principal I was trying to look like Desi Arnaz and he, he understood. He bought it, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was a good one. All right, one other thing we want to show here... Uh, you went into the studio in March of 1965 and cut some demos. And at the time, there was a guy on WFUN, a DJ, who is very familiar, I'm sure, to people who watched late night television, especially in the late 80s, a guy by the name of Morton Downey Jr. Now, uh, WFUN in Miami was 790 AM, which is now Waxy, the place where the Beast and Baker can be found. But Mort Downey Jr. as Doc Downey was a DJ there, and he played a role in the Montel's career. In fact, he was credited with putting sensor beeps in one of your singles. Right. How did that come about? Well, he just, uh, I was trying to get in with the guy, and uh, we became sort of friends. I bought him some whiskey, and I said, <laughs> why don't you just come over to where we're playing at, at the Dukoff? Uh, studios and the rest he just did it in his head. Now this is when Dukoff Studios was back in South Miami, right? right. The home studio, because it right. later moved to next door to the place in North Miami. Right. And the place the was, was one of the key uh, teen clubs back in around 1966-67. Yeah, that's for sure. The place was... Uh, now those right? sensor beeps, they really got people riled up. Apparently, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that actually was Morton Downey Jr.'s last top 40 gig. I mean, he really did quit after uh, being down here. And, of course, we don't have time to get into the whole story. It's in the book Savage Lost, if anyone wants to check that out. But uh, there was really a lot of censorship and a lot going on down here in the 60s. I mean, people would really be surprised today at what kids could not get away with exactly. then. Exactly. Louis Louis was the most popular thing on, uh, on record back then, and I... I guess we just fell right in without meaning to. Yeah. Now, I want to show one more thing here. This is Jeff in the middle of this photograph, which we're going to get a close-up of uh, pretty soon. One of the things that made the Montels so outstanding here in the 60s was the material that they played. A lot of it was by English groups that nobody had ever heard of before. And the reason for that is Jeff used to make trips to England and go to see some of these bands and bring back a lot of these records before anyone ever heard of them. Now, uh, tell us who was in this photograph, if you can. This okay, photograph. Well, I'm in the center there, a little younger and a little thinner. And uh, to the left is Brian Morrison, who was the Pretty Things manager. Now, that would be screen right, but to the left in the photograph. All right, whatever. Right. right. And, on, and on the other side, tell us who that gentleman is. That's Viv Prince, the one of my leading men i guess you'd say he was the guy the drummer i wanted to be like was viv prince and he was the pretty things drummer uh, from the original group understand they're getting together sometime next year now who are some of the other bands that you saw in your trips over to england in the mid 60s well let's see the rolling stones uh, did you see them in a little club no the stones were in a uh, um I forgot exactly what it is, but it was a large um, stage. So it wasn't like a Churchill's type of pub, no, right? No. Well, no, it was a stage. It was uh, like a, a movie house or something. 
like that. And I remember uh, all I, I couldn't really hear what they were doing. It really was wall-to-wall -wall screams basically through the entire show. Yeah. Quickly now, who were some of the other groups that you checked out while you were there? Did you see the Yardbirds? Oh, yeah. Yardbirds. I saw at the Rock, what was it, the Richmond Jazz and Blues Festival where I saw the Yardbirds and there was a group there that kind of took over was the Who, the original Who, when when uh, Roger Daltrey was actually smiling. Now, now this must have been mind blowing for a high school kid to be over in a foreign country and be and experience all this music that was really radical, radical and different really? from what was happening in our country at the time. Now, what what to me is so great about American garage bands like your bands in the 60s is that you took those British sounds and took them to the next level, took them to the extremes. The word you used to use was advanced. Advanced. All right, well, Jeff, I really appreciate you being here and talking about your experiences. Sure. We've got a